A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 83rd episode of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Lord Two. What started as a humble move back in April 2020 has today grown into India's largest thought exchange platform for educators. This journey has only been possible thanks to your love and support, and we hope to receive the same in the weeks to come. Week after week, we have tackled a multitude of topics. We have ranged from strictly curricular to the new education policy, to the extracurricular to co-curricular, even topics like mental health and holistic development. Today, we talk about a topic that goes right to the heart of our education system, that is value-based education. When we look back at our school days, we rarely remember exact lessons, topics, or chapters that were taught by our teachers. However, decades since, what stands us in good stead is the wonderful values that our teachers imparted to all of us. Today, we look at how the system has evolved and the importance of values in our current education system. Our first speaker today is Mr. Philip Barrett. Mr. Barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious Doon School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. He served the Doon School as housemaster, head of departments, dean of activities, Dean of Student Welfare, Deputy Headmaster, Second Master, and Acting Headmaster with great distinction. Mr. Barrett also carried out a visioning exercise for the Doon School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. He qualified as a leadership trainer at the Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He is also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. Sir, privileged to have you with us. Over to you. Thank you very much, Bayu, for that introduction. Um, and I must say this is a very interesting topic, um, confusing at times, um, because uh, one can very easily mix up uh, values with models and religion. Um, just to start with the fact that while religions teach one to be moral and have values, often religious people can be devoid of values and models while people possessing no faith at all, the atheists, may have great values and be very, very moralistic people. Um, I would define value or values as a list of qualities or ways of being or behaving that differentiates one from another. It is a quality that people hold value, give value to, and which one adopts, and without which the person would not be his intrinsic, authentic self. I once did an exercise by listing out as many values that I could think of. And let me tell you, this list is very, very long. And it's not easy for all of us to live by every value. But if every one of us took two values that we felt was really a part of our lives and practiced it, this world would be a far better place. Um, normally, one would expect a child to have imbibed some basic values of honesty, industriousness, love for fellow men before he or she joins schools, or at least by the age of five. And then it's up to the school to build on these values that the parents have planted in the child. The school has the task to reinforce the values that will hold the, the child in good stead through his life, as Shabayu said a little earlier. Of course, the point of conflict sometimes does occur when the values that are taught at home clash with the values that are trying to be uh, taught in school. And this causes a huge confusion and conflict in the, in the young minds. Um, I think the school's task is to make men and women of character and value is an integral part of character. I once read the, uh, this famous book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People where the management guru Stephen Covey says, that the days of the personality ethic is over. Companies don't look so much for personality. Yes, a pair of polished shoes and a tie that matched one's socks may be, you know, may look very smart. But what companies and what people are looking for today is men of character, men of moral fiber, people with an established value base. Uh, this is valued much more than a CV, you know, that tells of how many marks he got. 
responsibility, honesty, forgiveness, commitment, respect, dependability, patience, compassion, determination is what big companies are looking for. If you look at the Lehman Brothers and what they did after the stock market crash in 2008, and these were all highly trained Harvard Business School types, they ran away and left many, many people uh, bankrupt, poor people with, who, who had all their, their, their pensions locked up with them. And yet, what happened in the Taj in Mumbai in 2611? All these people stayed back, risking their lives to protect the people who were in their charge. And many of these people were actually from small towns in India because the Taj human resource people employed people with middle-class values. So it's not where you are educated, it's where you are born and what values you imbibe. Now, many schools do some value training. There was the old moral science, which I found very dry and boring. And you read stories from books and your teacher taught you from a textbook. And since they were never examined in a, in a normal test, children never had much interest in this. Then that gave way to what is called the life skills classes. This was a subject that encapsulates morals, identity, manners, sexual education, gender sensitivity. Uh, and each school, I think, could develop its own life skills curriculum. Some schools and schools abroad, they have an SEAL program, which is a social emotional aspects of learning. This too is of great value. Then there's a PSHE, which is a personal, social, health, economic education. Many schools teach this. It's got a wonderful curriculum. It teaches children how to use money, uh, how to look after their personal hygiene, their health, social, emotional, sexual health. But many schools actually do it in a very subliminal way. They teach values through community service programs by visits to the blind school, to hospitals and jails, Cheshire homes. Many children learn best when it's not talked about, in, it's very insidiously uh, mixed with the whole curriculum. Discussion groups held by tutors and class teachers, circle time, a controlled discussion where these issues can be discussed in an informal way are very, very effective. Then some schools bring in very eminent thinkers and guests and wise people to address uh, sections of this, of this uh, school. And of course, followed by a question and answer session. This is also very useful. The school counselors in many schools that I know, they have regular uh, programs and, and lectures um, on issues like gender issues, crimes against women, how it feels to be an LGBT person, how suicides in school, addictions. So the counselor's job is to, on, reg on a regular basis, hold these seminars and, and talks. Um, there's also been great debate in many, re in many residential schools uh, to start religious studies. Um, contemporary religion. Uh, but this sometimes um, many, many schools head shy away from going along this path because um, of course, parental sentiments, uh, how would people react? And I, I feel that schools should commit themselves to one or more ways that I have suggested earlier and go ahead regardless of what parents might think. Now, instead of having a value education as a subject, a time slot, um, you know, and a, and a certain area to be taught. I think children groan when they hear, oh, yet another subject that has to be taught, even if it's not tested. Interest is not lost. The best way to teach value education is to impart it imperceptibly, which it should be woven into the very fabric of the life of school, into the DNA of the school. Um, I think the world lacks good role models for young people to emulate, to copy, even sports people who, who kids look up to, even I looked up to Lance Armstrong, who's a great hero of mine. But what happened? He let us all down because he proved to be a cheat. And the film and the, and the matinee and the music idols that children um, uh, follow, you only have to go and see the posters in their room. Um, are these the right role models for children to follow? And many of our priests, gurus, pundits are often caught falling very short uh, and not practicing what they preach. And the only good role models left are our teachers, our heads of school. Because, uh, you know, sports, you know, as I said just now, sports heroes are so important for children. You'll find 
children cheating much more in an exam than on a sports field. Why is that so? And I think the best way to teach values in a school, to, to make a school value-based, is for teachers to be open and receptive to discussing with children in an informal manner. Um, but again, the teacher has to build up confidentiality and trust. It takes years to build these things. I think the quality of the individual teacher and his or her set of values of fairness, honesty, integrity, along with the right support from the head of school and the leadership team is the best way forward. Schools spend so much money on infrastructure, on equipment, on, on IT, that they forget that the biggest resource is the teacher. And, and children respond if they are treated by a kind, empathetic, impartial, hardworking, friendly teacher. Because often it is the teacher's values that get imparted to the students, apart from the fact that these teachers become very popular and very liked. Now, I think living a value-based life in school and in order to set an example for the students must be a whole school policy. It cannot be practiced by a few teachers. It's got to be top down. Everyone in school has to understand that this is a value-based school. And in this school, we don't do this, this, and this. I have seen children being punished for speaking the truth, punished for owning up to something they did. After they return something that they took, then they had a change of heart, they get punished. And then they lie. And who lies? People only lie when they're afraid. You know, if they knew that honesty would be rewarded, no children would lie. If children steal something and return it, it must never be punished. We, the adults, must make sure that in our non-verbal communication and our behavior, we are sending out the right messages to children. How many of us parents have told our children to lie when the phone rang at an ungodly hour? to tell the person on the other side of the line that you know, we were busy or we were not at home. We do it too. Now, not to bully someone, not to hurt others, to be honest, to be punctual. We, we have the basic set of manners and emotions. And you know, we must teach our children how to express emotions, how to express sadness and joy at the right times. Um, it's something that a child has to imbibe from the way we behave. It takes days, months, and weeks. It takes years. Now, some schools get known for the values that they practice. I know schools that are known for punctuality. Um, I know schools that are known for the fact that their children are very, very welcoming and wish all visitors. There are schools that don't cheat. Uh, now, each school has to set up a tradition. The moment the school builds up a tradition around a certain set of values, the subsequent new kids who join school Tend to, tend to fall into this tradition. Now, I know at my school, punctuality was not a strong value. Owning up for a fault committed was not a strong value. We had our own values, but these were not strong values and we were cognizant of the fact. Now, in a boarding school, the unwritten rule is you must not sneak. And we worked, in, we worked years and years to change this around. And we did this because we first went into the difference in the meaning of the word sneaking and reporting. We say, yes, don't sneak, but if things are going wrong and, as, and as things are going dangerous in the, in the dormitories, you need to report. So we changed this whole idea of thou shalt not sneak into thou shalt report. I know a school in the US, which I visited, where they have a very, very clear rule, no cheating, stealing, and lying. And they sign a book when they come into school. They may have other wrongs that they do, but they do not cheat, steal, or lie. Uh, I know another school called Wellington College in the UK, where I did a leadership course. They have a wellness program. They teach a subject called wellness, uh, which relates to topics like relationship with others, how you treat people, self-image addictions, how to behave socially, uh, also how to live in college in the first year. They teach courses of, you know, teach boys and girls how to cook, how to iron clothes, how to, how to run a house how to do the laundry, how to spend money, how to invest in money, how to entertain. It's like a finishing school, but it's, it's in a program called the wellness uh, lesson. Um, in our school, in the Doon school, we tied up at the girls' school, our sister school, and we had the girls over to our school where they learned carpentry, basic electricity, 
how to use a drill, household chores. And our boys went there to learn how to cook and how to iron and how to housekeep. These are all values. Um, I know a school that is done away with invigilators during exams. It took years that they now believe that they have they've come to a level where they can be so honest that they don't have to have invigilators. Um, I also work part-time in a small school in Dehradun where we have listed 22 key values. And every month I discuss two of these values with the teachers and they make uh, they do um, blogs and podcasts and they learn to teach these values to the children in any way they want to. Um, when I was working in Delhi in a co-educational school, I made it a point that if a student was absent for three days in a row, I, along with a group of students, would go and visit that student, whether he was in hospital or was he or whether at home. And I think this went down very well with them because in doing this, you can teach people how to be concerned, how to, how to show um, love and affection. Now, most schools do have consequences in place for students who err, uh, or these, you know, students who, who slip up, the bully, the cheat, the, the guy who uses substance. Now, some schools have a, no, have a one strike policy, one mistake out. Some schools have a two strike policy. You get a warning and then you're out. But simply expelling a student is never the right answer. There must be consequences, there must be uh, restrictions in place that deter students from doing wrong. But I think we need a far more empathetic way of helping students to get off self-destructive behavior. Boundaries are important for children. They need to know the rules. Uh, children allowed to exist in a laissez-faire uh, home or school are never happy kids. They love it when you draw around them certain boundaries. And punitive action should never be um, uh, in, a, in a sort of revengeful or spiteful way. I think all punitive action should be helping, a helpful way, you know, while you maintain the dignity of the student. It's never embarrassing. It's always maintaining the dignity. Now, one has to keep the student in school <clears throat> and invest time and energy to bring about a lasting behavioral change. At the end of it, what is the purpose of education? Is it to churn out 99 percenters and get them into great colleges? Or is it to produce upright, fair, and honest human beings? And in this regard, the size and repetition of a school is immaterial. I've seen the smallest, most insignificant schools doing the best work when it comes to value education. Turning out just the type of students who will raise their voice against wrong, women's issues, child labor, rape, infanticide, child trafficking. These are the people who will raise their voice. We live in a global society. Children need to know that they're global citizens. They need a sense of culture, culturally what is right and what is wrong. They need social values. They need to go through the UN list of, you know, uh, of, 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 of rules, you know, uh, on, um, uh, huge amount of work that be, can be done by the UN lists. And, um, uh, if, you know, we'll do a big disservice uh, to children if we leave them half boiled, intelligent but boorish, first divisioners but crass and abrasive, smart but culturally philistines. And at the end of the day, it is the duty of every school to teach children the difference between right and wrong. And the golden rule, very important, which is to do unto others as you would have others do unto you. I think this is the baseline. I think this sums up the idea of value-based education in school. Each school has to work out its own unique way of how it's going to impart value education. But I think value education is the bedrock on which everything else depends. Thank you very much for listening to me. I hope I have laid some uh, base ground so that the, 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 the discussion can be taken further by our eminent speakers and, uh, and Achan. Thank you very much. Over to you, Shubhai. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that wonderful opening uh, piece. I don't think we could have done any better when it comes to an introduction to the importance of value education in our schools. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Achan Bhattacharya. Achan is the founder and CEO at Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, Ochin was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He 
He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. He is a fellow of the ICAI and a member of CPA Australia. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Indian Achievers Award. Ochan is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochan, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Should I have an audible? Yeah, sure. Loud and clear. I once again welcome all of you to today's session on a topic which perhaps defines the entire purpose of education. To develop a value system for life, one which can withstand all challenges that life may throw at us and still remain intact even in the most testing times. I certainly believe the purpose of school was to develop and exercise students' potential for reasoning from ethical character and provide a skill and knowledge base. He thought the purpose of schooling was to develop dispositions and habits that exercise reason and forming human ethos. So if we refer to Oxford English Dictionary, value is defined as the regard that something is held to deserve, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. Value, the word value comes from the Latin word valera, which means to be worth, to be strong. Thus, we see so much emphasis on worth. We all know that values gives direction and firmness to life. And whenever we discuss about any person in our surroundings, in our known circles, we tend to associate him or her with a certain set of values. Those values gives identity to a person. It gives him a name, a face, a character. Literally, value is something that has a price, something precious dear, something which is worthwhile, and hence, something for which one is ready to suffer and sacrifice for, a reason to live and die for. If necessary, values definitely gives us direction and firmness and brings to life the important dimensions of meaning. So if you look at you know, all our human emotions, be it joy, satisfaction, peace, we can easily associate them to certain, with certain values. So they're like our standard codes of conduct. They're like our cultural tenets guided by conscience. Now, high values, when we, we discuss about high values, you know, they, they lead to objective, fair, and correct decision and action and ensure the welfare of all concerned. While low values, naturally, they do exactly the opposite. Thus, the way I look at it, value is a relation between a person and an environmental situation, which evoke an appreciative response in the individual. So even if we look at in terms of our contribution to the larger society in terms of contribution to welfare, towards the community and nation, you all understand that what is really important is the set of values that a person believes in and practices. I remember a very famous quote by Winston Churchill and very appropriate in this case, which I wanted to share with all of you. He once very famously said, the first duty of the university is to teach wisdom and not trade, character and not technicalities. So mark his words, wisdom and not trade, character and not technicalities. So clearly values has been given preference over domain knowledge, which is definitely important, but given. Now, 
when we discuss about value naturally the next thing that comes in as a natural progression is value based education so what exactly is value based education to me it is an approach to teaching that works with values something which creates a strong learning environment that not only enhances academic achievement and develops but also develops students social and relationship skills and the last throughout their lives like irrespective of how severe tough times are irrespective of any test that life takes a person is able to hold on to his or her values even in most testing and trying times thus value based education is essential to develop any individual and help him or her lifelong now what is really important is if we discuss about value education it's something which makes us more responsible and sensible so what exactly is value based education it's an approach to teaching that works with values for instance creating strong strong learning environment as we discussed enhancing academic attainments but at the same time working on social and relationship skills now how do you do that how do you really build on these skills how do you really equip a student with social relationship skills with with intelligence and attitude to succeed without compromising on core values you know when we actively engage with values we we really start to understand their implication in terms of making choices when we are at a crossroad in life any crossroad in life what is our response what is our attitude are we ready to work hard and take the proper route or do we belong to that group who wants to take a shortcut to success maybe a very short lived success so life really tests us when we are at a crossroad thus a value based approach encourages reflective and aspirational attributes and attitude this can be nurtured to help anyone discover the very best in themselves which enables them to be good citizens and prepare them for the entire lifetime now what is important is i i i remember another very 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 good quote by john dewey one of the stalwarts so whenever we discuss about education naturally john dewey's name comes in he was very famously said education is a social process education is a social process education is growth education is not a preparation for life but it's life itself so very beautifully explained and the concept of social process coming in concept of growth coming in and the fact that it is life itself thus if you look at all stakeholders in the educational ecosystem each one of them has their own individual role if we start with for instance parents the first school a child attends is his home and parents are the first teacher with the help of their conduct and behavior they induce an influence on their children and it's an indelible impression something that the child really carries throughout his or her life thus they play a very major role in inculcating values in children values which are essential in terms of character building personality building second major role undoubtedly is that of a teacher teachers are really role models and i believe that as nation builders personal developers guides mentors their role in terms of in terms of inculcating values in, in, in children can only be compared to that of parents so any grown up that you speak to and you discuss about the values that he or she believes in and the source from where he or she first time came across those values and started believing in it undoubtedly in most cases you will find parents and teachers 
If you look at things from a holistic perspective, for instance, values enshrined in the Constitution of India, which point towards principles of equality, social justice, and appreciation of cultural values of each other and dignity of individual. You know, so important. When we hear them, when we read them in one breath, it seems like just a sentence. But when you break them down, and look at each individual word, be it principles of equality, social justice, appreciation of cultural values, and dignity of individuals, conveys so much of meaning. So undoubtedly, education is one of the most powerful tools in modeling character and determining the future of not only individuals, but also nations, because collectively these individuals go on to shape the destiny of nations and the globe. Plato once emphasized that educational effort should aim at the promotion of virtue. Likewise, another very famous philosopher, Herbert, declared that the whole work of education, which is long and complex training. So he started with this that the whole work of education, which is long and complex training, should focus on one particular thing that could be summed up in the concept, and that is morality. So the end objective of the entire educational process, the long and complex training, years that a child puts in. So according to Herbert, it should focus, the entire focus of education system should be towards one single word, and that is morality. It really goes on to explain the importance, right? Now, if you look at the Indian concept of education, for instance, University Education Commission, very, very nicely sums it up. As I was reading a few lines, which I wanted to share with all of you, in this one particular para, it sums up a lot. Education, according to Indian tradition, is not merely a means of earning a living. Thus, nor is it only a nursery of thought or a school for citizenship. It is the initiation into a life of spirit, a training of human soul in pursuit of truth and practice of virtue. So see, it clearly goes on to explain a lot, right? One single para, not merely a means of earning living, neither a school for citizenship, but initiation into life of spirit and training of human soul in pursuit of truth and practice of virtue. So much of value we find in this one single para. Thus, education can never afford to lose its true meaning. It can't be a means of mere examination, employment, and consequential financial empowerment. It can't be the whole and sole object of education. It has to lead to emancipation, ennoblement, and evolution. It can't lead to only superficial achievements. Education system is not for money making, but for man making. And I think this is the true essence of education. Now, life-centered ethics have to be dealt with to develop the will, to live a good moral life, to keep away from evil, to develop a spirit of sacrifice, you know, an attitude of consideration for others. Are we really considerate about others? So, Swami Vivekananda also once very famously said, the goal of education is man-making. It is the making of whole human being. So few basic, very, very important, but very basic things like thinking positive, being compassionate, not harming others, discovering inner peace because only when we are at peace with ourselves, can we make peace with the entire world and make the world a better place to live. Learning to live together, being able to respect the other person's space and respecting human dignity. So when we look at values, again, various types of values, be it, be it personal values, universal values, human values, religious values, 
And again, when we discuss about religious values, for instance, believe that a person, you know, a particular person's belief in a particular school of thought, which is a guide of reasoning between good and bad. Civic values, so important. Do's and don'ts for citizens. Moral values, what we have been discussing about. I think birds also gave some wonderful examples in this regard. Spiritual values, national values, which is so, so important. Principles which really imbibe the feeling of patriotism and national integration. Really, really ensuring thinking as a nation, not only on 15th August and 26th January, but around the year. Not only on a day when, when the country wins a cricket match, but 365 days a year. Being proud of the tricolor. Social values, scientific values. I remember another very, very uh, beautiful few lines written by Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. He stated that education is a process that tells us how to live life well. So the aim of education, if you see all these great men, the way they have looked at education. So Ramakrishna Paramahansa such beautifully explained that the aim of education is because it really tells us the process as to how to live life well, how to find happiness. He, he, he goes on to say, how to make others happy. So happiness is not only about our own happiness, but making others happy. And how to, make, how to manage all kinds of people and happening as well. And how to grow and succeed in the right manner. I think very wonderfully explained. You know, very, very beautifully explained. To, to sum it up, I think two, three lines very beautifully sums it up. Education without vision is a waste. Education without value is a crime. And education without mission is a life's burden. So a nation with atomic power, undoubtedly it's a great achievement, but may or may not be a strong nation, but a nation with people with strong character is indeed strong nation. And history has proved it time and again. We have seen what human resolve can go on to do. Now, before I end, another very, very wonderful phrase by Johann Wolfgang, German poet. I think one of his quotes really strikes a chord in this regard. He once said, if you treat an individual as he is, he will remain how he is. But if you treat him as if he were what he ought to be and he could be, he will become what he ought to be and what he could be. So that the essence is that if you really want to live in a better world, if you really want your fellow citizens to do well, treating them with dignity and respect and ensuring that the element of trust is intact, the element of positivity is intact. So these are a few things that I wanted to share on this very important topic. We have a wonderful panel today and I really look forward to the deliberation on this very important topic. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing. Over to you, Shubhai. Thank you, Achin. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. As always, wonderful quotes and examples from around the globe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we start with the panel discussion, I know that all of you are waiting for a little bit about Notebook. We at Notebook convert the school curriculum into short, crisp videos that are meant to serve two purposes. One, you as educators can use these videos as part of your class. Whether you're taking your class online or offline, you can share links to these videos with your students prior to the class. The students can watch the videos even before they get in. And once in the class, a very short six to eight minute video serves to raise their interest level and engage them better in the lesson that is to follow. And the second purpose that these videos serve is that months later, when these students have to prepare for their exams, they have access to the same videos from home on their personal laptops, mobile phones, smartphones, whatever device they have. And that means they can then revise these topics using these videos and also get reminded of what you taught in class that day when you had played the video. What I will do now is to play a short snippet 
of one of the notebook videos. The NCRT has done a phenomenal job of introducing value through the various curriculum that they have planned. We will play a short clip of one of those notebook videos and then move on to the panel discussion. Thus, when we use words like weak, greedy, money-minded, lazy, etc. to describe the people of a community, religion, gender or financial background, we give rise to stereotypes. These stereotypes prevent us from looking at each individual as unique. These unfair prejudices try and fit a large number of people in a grid and downsize them to a word. We must not pay heed to these prejudices. When people act on their prejudices, they discriminate towards others. This is because of the unjust stereotypes their opinions are based on. If you prevent someone from sharing the same utensils as you, from taking part in certain activities or jobs, from living in certain localities, due to their religion, culture, economic background, etc., you are discriminating against them. The children in the photographs are children with special needs. The term used to refer to them earlier was disabled. This term has since then been changed to differently abled. It is not correct to make fun of people with abilities or needs different from us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a short clip of one of the notebook videos. More than 10,000 such videos are available on www.notebook.school should you choose to use them. With that out of the way, it is now time to move on to the panel discussion we have today. We have a stellar panel, as Akshin said a little while earlier. It is now my privilege to introduce them to you one by one. We have with us Mr. Arul Dharmaraj Thomas. Mr. Thomas is the principal of the Integrated Indian School in Kuwait. He holds an MSc degree in mathematics, a BA, and an MBA in finance management. He has an experience of more than 15 years in education. He currently holds the position of the convener of the Kuwait chapter, appointed by CBSC as Inspector of Indian Schools for Extension of Affiliation. His life motto is to God be the glory and the best is yet to be. He believes in living in harmony and also says, we came with nothing and the same we return. Sir, thank you so much for being here today. It's a privilege to have you. We also have with us Dr. Ashish Kumar Sarkar, who is the founder principal of a school. An influential administrator, the best educator and impressive personality, Dr. Sarkar is known as the curriculum designer and an effective teacher's trainer. He is currently associated with the Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan School in Vardha District, Maharashtra. He has an experience of 22 years as teacher, vice principal, principal, and city coordinator of NTA. He is a keen observer, and his ability to convert challenges into opportunities is pretty well known. Sir, thank you so much for being part of the panel. It's a privilege thank to you. have you here. Unfortunately, our third panelist, uh, Ms. Jyoti Saxena, could not be with us today. Uh, she was unfortunately detained by her official duties. But I do believe that uh, with Mr. Thomas and Dr. Sarkar, we have a wonderful discussion ahead of us. I will stop my share, switch on the camera so that we can see each other. Sir, thank you once again for being part of this panel. Thank you so much. Well, uh, you. to start with, uh, if I may start with uh, uh, Arul, sir. sir in teaching values to students, right? What are the primary hurdles that you face? We've heard about the wonderful advantage, the good side of it, but when we get down to the brass tacks, I'm sure there must be some hurdles to any task that you undertake. So in your experience, what are those hurdles? Good evening to all the co-panelists and Sir Philip and Achin for having enriched us with the knowledge of value-based education along with education. This education is not a problem. Education is an opportunity. See, value-based education talks about so many values as already previously expressed by the experts. But as the question is posed to me directly about the hurdles that is faced by schools today, by the authorities, I would like to substantiate or second with the opinion of 
A third, sir, that the hindrance is that the curriculum is not implemented because it is not given priority in the schools because it is not examined. The first hindrance I would like to say, the schools are failing in their duty to impart value education or moral education because it is not examined or it is not given or integrated into the regular subjects. Take it for any subject that we have in our list. Every subject, every chapter, every concept has a value-based question in it. But to the teachers, to the education, take it with that same degree to the students. It is prepared with the concept of only exam. Every concept is made to memorize. Every concept is just prepared with the uh, promotion of examination, not to inculcate the exam, I mean, the moral values. Today, as for my side here in Kuwait, the teachers are trying to put their effort, hard earned effort, into online teaching. But how far is it getting implemented? The hindrance is online, remote, remote learning is its own hindrance. They have been teaching online, blended learning. So many processes of learning has come in this pandemic situation. But the interest of students, the involvement, of students are the hindrances. The value based as expressed by various other sources are not optimistic as of today as it is to be. So my opinion, the first hindrance is the priority of value based education is not given due importance by the authorities and the proper interpretation and integration of values are not integrated. I mean, integrated even in the pedagogy of teaching. How far are we really insisting? Take for an example, we do teach about smoking is bad, but are these values that we talk about today, let it be anything that we named it, characters, all, it changes from culture to culture because we live in a multilinguistic, heterogeneous groups, but how far each group takes it? It's a hindrance. In India, the value system is different. In Pakistan, the value system is different. Though the fundamental basics are the same. Everywhere we say, speak the truth. But how far are we encouraging our children to speak the truth? How, how far our children today are really practicing honesty in their exams on online? These hindrance. The hurdles are named that the teachers, students, parents, and the society has started accepting corruption, bribing has become quite normal to be in fact a new normal. We are trying to be compromising with so many things, with the characters, with our own behavior pattern, and hence we have been the hindrance of our own value-based education. There was days in India, the moment we don't obey parents, the, the, the day we don't obey teacher, then come and tell the teacher, teacher, please do not spare the child. Make it happen that the child should learn the manners, the culture, the character, the respect for the elders. All that is very induced. But today, teachers are being threatened. Teachers are being threatened. It's a hindrance. We have been clutched. The hitches are too high that the teachers cannot correct a child. The childs are being supported by the parent. So I don't blame only the parent only the child, only the teacher, the whole system has started believing that getting involved in value education has no importance as of now. So this is according to me of a few hindrances or hurdles that we face in education systems. And that's it for us now. Wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Sarkar, I'll come to you with the same one. Uh, sir, obviously teachers in Kuwait so has a more heterogeneous mix, uh, but in your experience, uh, what has been the hurdles in teaching values? Yeah, as far as this uh, hurdle concern, before that, uh, let me share something. I was listening very keenly, Flip sir, and then Achin, and then Arul sir also. What actually uh, Flip sir was mentioning, teachers are not implementers. That is one thing. The another second thing is a very big question for a role model. 
specifically for children, whether you talk about parents' behavior at home or teachers' behavior within the boundary of the school. The main point is that when we are talking about the value education, or uh, somewhere I read it, it is the education is without value is like a flower without fragrance. I do not know why today we, all the schools, all the educationists, eminent personalities, we are talking about the value education. Why? It's a big question for me. Why it happened? Why this thing? Because see, <clears throat> let me tell you what are the values. Values refer to those values which are at the core of being human being. Now the point is, this is the need of the hour or the demand of this era that we have to decide whether we want generation with academic excellence or you can say academic excel with human being or being human. Somewhere I read a very good quotation. Let me share here. You can educate a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, but if you want to educate a generation, please add values. Their values are very, very important. And I think today, NEP is for that. As far as you're talking about this uh, harder concern, as Arul sir also was telling, needless to blame all the stakeholders because there is a need to understand the responsibility and role by parents, by teachers, by society, because I remember my schooling days, maybe that time we were not having that much source of information what today children they do have. So really it's a big question that today a child is thinking ki he or she is my role model and next day in the newspaper about him or her, something wrong. And the child is thinking what happened. But the meanwhile, uh, teacher's role is very, very important. Uh, let me tell you one thing. I remember uh, in my school, a child was having the attitude and the arrogant behavior. Because one thing, let me tell before this, this value education, a value-based education cannot be framed within the books or the syllabus or the curriculum, very sorry, eminent personalities are there. I'm quite younger than, uh, younger than them in uh, experience term, but my I think in a very different way. We cannot frame it like a curriculum because day is gone when we are going to narrate a story and we are asking, yeah, children, what is the moral of the story? Now there is a need to have a proper demonstration in the school. The hurdle is that how to demonstrate. So first we have to inculcate values within ourselves that we do not do. We do have expectation from children and why children will follow you, why children will say yes to you when you are going to tell them or you are going to make them learn the relation between the causes and the result. As Achin sir was talking about the reasoning, what is the reasoning? What is the science? I'm talking about the other subjects. What is the science? The relation between the causes and the results. So why child will accept? Why child will say yes to parents and the teachers? As Arun sir was saying, one day definitely a child will say, teachers, please don't teach me this. The point is that somewhere we have to inculcate those values within ourselves. We have to demonstrate. We have to keep one benchmark and examples in front of them then only it is possible. Now I'm coming back to what I was uh, willing to share with you. In my school, a child was having the attitude and the arrogancy and the parents just, they approach us, yeah, how to work out on this. Can you believe the meanwhile, a sport teacher was sitting with me in my office. A sport teacher suggested, parents, why can't you, tell him or her to start playing table tennis. The table tennis is the best game where a child can control the arrogance. I was quite surprised. And I asked, can you say something more about it? 
Then he said me, sir, actually the table tennis is a game where a child has to respect opponent, cannot have the aggression, what we do have in other games and the sports. So the thing is that this is the role of the teachers. When the teachers, they will realize, yes, I'm there to inculcate values, then only it is possible. See, as far as your heard of also, again, I am telling, the value-based education or the value, the value education is associated with the different pedagogies and the programs, which is used by the educators and the teachers, but need to have responses in place of the reactions. Still, as a parent, as a teacher, as a peer, as a friend, as a society, we have not learned it. If we have to respond, not to react. Because if you want to inculcate value education, there is a need to discuss. There's a need to talk on the issues. Then only you can inculcate values. So I think if, if you're talking about the hurdle to inculcate or implement in the school system, the first we have not to frame within the curriculum, within the syllabus. Their action learning is required in every corner of the school, whether being a head of the institution, it is my duty that how I'm going to speak with my teachers in presence of my children. How I'm going to speak with my ayadidis and the bhaiyas in presence of children. So that is very, very important. What unfortunately we are lacking. Sometimes we behave in front of children like that. So then it is very difficult to implement value education system. Wonderful, sir. Leading by example, I think works well. Uh, sir, sticking to your point about role models, unfortunately, young students have two sets of role models, right? One is the teachers in school and another is the parents at home. And uh, as we know, parents are not a very homogeneous group. The students are coming from, you know, different kinds of houses with different mentalities and different value systems. Uh, so how do you tackle this distribution? Uh, Dr. Sarkar, if I may take you first on this one. Uh, how, do, how do you tackle it when students walk into the school after, you know, spending the day with parents whose value systems might not be the same as what you want to teach? First of all, I want to make you a little correct. Please do not mind it. Now for children, I'm very sorry. Teachers are not role model. Parents are not role model. They are looking towards all the actors and female actors. They are the role models. He-man, Superman, that is only. Now, as far as behavior concern, yes, they do learn from teachers as well as parents. Now, I'm coming to your answer. When child is observing minutely behavior of the parents at home and coming to school, that's why we have to find out the root cause. Okay, why child is behaving like this? Why child does not have the value system? That is very, very important. What is the background of a family background and socioeconomic status of the child? That is also very, very important. One another example I am giving you. I remember May 31st, uh, National uh, Anti-Tobacco Day. I had been invited for a lecture in one of the institution and I was using public transport and I was moving to was that place. I seen one elder and the younger brother, they were sitting in that transport and then elder one taking care of the younger brother. I was very happy after seeing that the elder brother is taking care of the younger brother because I requested him, can I have seat because that public transport was full of rush and all this thing. He gave me the seat and then I was sitting with them and he was so much concerned with the younger brother. Okay, I was so happy after looking this. But after five or 10 minutes, what he did, can you believe? He took out the tobacco one and given to younger brother. I was so astonished how suddenly this character changed. And as I'm habitual to give lecture, immediately I started. Dear friend, what are you doing? Why are you doing like this? Don't you feel you are doing wrong? I appreciate his patience level. He listened to me very patiently. And the last he gave me the answer. Sir, I have to travel for another 45 kilometer with my younger brother 
and I do not have food. I know after 20 minutes, my younger brother will ask me for some food or he will demand that I'm hungry. So what I will give? So when I'm giving this the tobacco one, at least that my younger brother will not make me trouble. Literally, I'm saying I started crying. This is the root cause. We talk about the value education, how value education will work when the socio-economy status of children, teachers, schools are totally black. Now, my point is that as you are talking about parents' behavior, yes, sometimes it happens because sometimes the what parent status, the business-wise also it is different. I remember one another example I am telling you, a child used to abuse every time. We tried to counsel. Then the child accepted that my father does have the business of the lottery. And whenever he just give phone calls, he abuses. So I learned everything from my father. And that's it. I said, okay, fine. That is his business. Why you are, why you're not trying to learn something good from your father? Why you are always thinking my father abuses and all these things? The point is that when this thing is there, so how to deal with that? That no solution. I need to talk with the parents. Call parents. Talk with the parents. If we are trying at our institution, we are giving our best and inculcating the values, but somewhere there is a scope of improvement within your behavior also. Maybe the fight between the mother and father. As I remember last time also I spoke with you, if a mother is saying, if this child, most of the time mother parents, they say, Very bad nahi sunta hai. he did not listen. Why? Because mother from the day one, Papa aenge, I'll tell to Papa. You are doing like that. The very first day the child understood for mother does not have any power. Father only does have the power. Father only can punish. So from that day he started or she started not listening to mother. So inculcation of the values, it is a uh, both side responsibility. School as well as uh, parents need to have a proper collaboration, association and need to talk and discuss on the issues. In that way, we can inculcate values. Yeah, could you please unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arun sir, if I may come to you with the uh, with the same one, uh, particularly because you referred to that point earlier. I'm sure you have parents from both Indian as well as Pakistani heritage, and as much as we don't like it, these children have grown up in houses where there's incredible animosity between the two systems, so to say. How, how do you deal with that? Very opposing value systems existing together. Very simple. That it is not a question of India or Pakistan. I do have almost 31 nationalities studying in our schools, starting with Egyptians, the Jordanians, the Sri Lankans, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, even Indonesians and Indians. See, as I believe the basic ethics, basic values start from the house. We call teachers as only second parents, but teachers are the parents and teachers cannot be the parents. However, the child imitates, mimics the parental character. Whatever is the nature of the parent in their talking, in their action, in their reaction, the complete thing is reflected in the child's character. So the complete ethics, character, values, morals are starting at home. To tell you a small incident, see, there was a hotel, five-star hotel, and a man went with his son to the hotel coffee. And that's where he saw a scene of the previous person who was going towards the gate or open for this particular father and child to enter. How good they felt when someone more than their caliber, more than their educational level, keep a door open for them to enter in. This we could have come across in our own life. Imagine when you go to a man, your office, somebody is going in front of you and keeping the door open for you to just enter. It is a very just simple act of gesture, but how good we feel. This particular value was spoken to the child by the father. See how good you feel. This is what we need to implement. When he came to the school, he did the same. 
for his own colleagues, for his own friends, for his own teacher. It just helped to keep the door open and for them to tell. It's an automatic door. So as long as we are able to inculcate this particular value into our system, into the children, that's where we stand distinguished from the others. There have been cases of a father driving a car with the children and he sees a driver going ahead of him and then he uses abusive terms to the driver who goes in front. The child feels that using an abusive term when things are going, norm, going abnormal is quite normal. So a child coming to the school just imbibes, inculcates the opinion, the action, the character of the parents and reflects the complete parent. Of course, there is a difference. When they go to the peer group, when they go to their own level of students, if they join with those students who are of good family with good character, then the child's character automatically changes to that of good. So it basically depends. Value-based education starts at home, of course, nurtured in the school. Teachers should become an instrument to nurture such qualities of values into the children. Wonderful, sir. I think nature versus nurture debate kind of at its core. Uh, sir, if I may ask you any categorical examples where you have perhaps taught a certain thing to a student and then parents come to you later opposing what you have taught in terms of values? Uh, to, to be frank with you, there have been incidents happening here and there, but we cannot narrow down saying them. See, anything that is taught good, there is no parent who is going to oppose it. Unless in our case, it is against ethics, against moral, against religion. That's what we face here. But there have been cases. For example, I have been uh, teaching fitness program for my children at a large, for classes three to five, around 400 to 500 children were participating on the ground. And being a passionate learner of yoga, I just told my students to fold their arms and raise it above their heads like this. And I being living in a country where there are uh, Islamic religion practice, I heard students not happy about that particular movements with the hands. Immediately I could get calls from parents asking, sir, please don't do it, it's a haram, it's not allowed in our religion. Though I did it with a good intention. Likewise, see, as I told you an example earlier, the usage of toiletries. There have been a video played in my school one day to educate them how to use toilets, how to have the etiquettes of table manners. See, the cultures are different. I had told them on a Western commode how to use the toilet. And a child see, saw that video where there was an insect going on. The child got scared of that particular insect being moving around in the commode and went to the house and Told the parent, does not come on me, there will be insects, I can't do. So the parents have to come directly confronting me, asking, I said, maybe I have failed to watch that particular thing in that particular video. The concept was to teach them good values, how to etiquettely use. Because as uh, uh, Sir Philip said, the basic education in Japan, the basic education in Finland, the basic education in Switzerland are life learning skills, first, not just giving them all educational types. So schools should imbibe the life skills. Do unto others, as the gold, gold versus again, sister said, do unto others what you want them to do to you. First, teach them whatever you want them to do to you. The good man, good cultures. So to practically say a situation where the parents have been, even there were cases where uh, even small children who said, and we have taken cigarette packets, cigarette packets. And I saw a mother surprisingly coming to me when I called for an explanation of that mother. Mother six, your child is just studying fifth standard and the child is holding a cigarette packet. You know, the mother came just by his action. Oh, it is not his, it is his father's cigarette packet. Mistakenly, the child had to carry it in his school, uh, school bag. I just told, you see, however it is, Still, you should be able to correct your child saying that the child is not supposed to carry this particular packet to the school and he comes and shows to the other class children 
very proud. Oh, you know, see, this is what I carry around. And the mother is not able to understand the correction that we give. So there have been cases. Occasionally, here and there, we come across. But no parents, no teacher, opposes any good character, any good thing that is taught in the school. Like as I have said about uh, the, even there were cases about good touch and bad touch. I was taking a seminar for the senior class, middle school children, especially six, seven, eight. What is a good touch? What is a bad touch? There was a beautiful presentation which I made. You know, these girl children would not even allow the parent to touch them after that. The girl children went and told, no, no, no. Yeah. But we had a very clearly distinct what is a good touch. You, can, you should understand the good touch and bad touch. Even your own relatives, kith and kin, who are coming to their house, you should understand the difference between the good touch and bad touch. There were parents who came to me asking, sir, I know you are doing it for good, but how far the children are taking it are in a difference. Sometimes even the father touching the girl child after seven, eight, they say, no, no, don't touch me. I said, the father should be able to teach and guide the child again of the follow-up of what we do in the school. It is not only we, we have placed the values and guidance, but the follow-up follow -up also should be done from the houses. So these are occasions where we have been doing good corrections, good imbibing and inculcating of good values. But when it comes to the parents not taken in the right sense, of course, there were contradictions, but the parents are convinced when we tell them that the purpose of what we have been doing. So this was, was my experience in my school and other, other schools as well. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sarkar. If I may come to you next. Uh, I'll take one question from the Q&A panel that we've received before I go on to my other questions. Uh, Ms. McDonald asks, at school, how can we as teachers differentiate between morals and values? I think that's a very interesting distinction to make. Yeah. So if you would like to take that one. Yeah, a very simple answer I can give because the moral, moral and the values, the two topics where we can debate for a long term. But a very simple answer I can give here. Moral is a standard behavior. Your standard values, what you are carrying. And the values, what actually your own belief for that. The example I can give, even uh, I, I can elaborate it with the one example. As Arul sir also was uh, talking about, and you asked very good question to Arul sir. Ki our parents, they turn up with that, ki that school is doing wrong. The same incident took in my place. We do have a Sarva Dharma prayer in every day in our assembly. I will not here point out the name of that particular religious person. He turned up and no, sorry, I seen one day that his daughter was not uttering a single word and simply she was standing by keeping mom and this. I called his daughter in my office and I asked better why you are not uttering word and why you are not going for this Sarva Dharma prayer. She said very honestly, Sir, my papa said, don't do this. In our religion, it is not allowed. In our religion, prayer is not allowed. And as far as Hindu dharm concerned, we, it is not allowed. Vande Matram, it is not allowed. See how the parents, they are trying to educate their children. The very second day, I called parents and I said, gentlemen, fine. I do agree, I respect. Okay, fine. I can understand you are not at all agree with the Sarva Dharma somehow. What my belief system is there. But at least, can you have the Sarva Dharma Swikari? And can you ask your child to have this? So that is only what you're talking, a question, a simple answer is there. Your standard behavior is moral. And what your belief system, that is values. That is a simple answer. I just go by Ashish's view that yes. moral values stands for mostly religion based and then uh, the values are uh, what we are wanting to be. Yes. What values are what you are wanting to be, morals are what is already set. Wonderful. I think that uh, question is very well answered now. Uh, Dr. Sarkar, if I may, <laughs> excuse me, if I may come to you next. Uh, sir, with technology being a part of education now, especially post-pandemic, and in general, the adoption of technology has absolutely exploded around us. 
do you think with such tremendous access not just to information but to both good and bad kinds of information is such access to technology eroding the value system a little bit or has it transformed the way value based education takes place sorry your voice was cracking i'm very sorry no problem sir i'll repeat myself i'm saying that with such access to technology now mm -hmm. has the value based education as a system transformed a little bit has it changed has it made it more difficult more easy yeah with the help of technology also we can do as i told you in the beginning ki we cannot frame this value education in term of books or the curriculum what is the need when a teacher is going to start classes online a teacher can have some informal talk a true informal talk teachers can inculcate values when the online classes is there a suddenly a child has said today is my birthday what should be the reaction a teacher is saying oh your birthday is today many many happy returns of the day so what is your plan party shaati evening what are you doing with this can't teacher ask what you did in the morning have you touched feet of your parents have you spoken to your grandparents so with the help of technology also it is not like that yes definitely technology cannot replace teachers because in the value education somewhere the personal touch also playing very vital role appreciation appreciation patting on the back it's equally important what because of the covid now it is not it is not there but the thing is that with the technology also we can just now you have shown wonderful videos you have given answer of my question differently abled students a beautiful word i learned today differently abled how beautiful it was it is because of the technology only so it is not like that it is somewhere the myth ke yeah through technology we cannot inculcate value education yes we can but the way to handle that technology before starting your online classes have some informal talk just inculcate some values start your class saying by namaste and then you start this is a one kind of with the help of technology we can inculcate wonderful sir arun sir the same question to you yeah uh, i understand the value based education can be still practiced positively in online technology however we developed with our already mentioned they cannot replace teachers that's absolutely not but the problem here is how far the students really make use it of in for a positive way, purpose here anything too good too much of usage is not good because the uh, moment the child is given with a mobile how much of hours that the child is using i just quote you two examples in the beginning stages of my online classes in the first week of april when we began in kuwait sir the children were very very interested they were totally facing new situation they were really excited including the teachers they do not know what to, what is the zoom what is the media what is the other ways of teaching they were all really uh, excited to do it as the days passed by including my board class children started switching up the videos sleeping while going up for a snack how honest were they that's a big question now now sometimes even the leaders like us do make you know what is the thing when we had given online exams to the children there were children who were really honest they wrote the exams without googling without copying they did submit the answers very genuinely unlike others but what did we do when the time of promotion we said oh what is this was question and you are not able to answer even this and then out of 100 the child was scoring only 28 and 29 and we failed the child and of, of course i had a discussion with the exam department for 11th child in cbse and the cbse said give him a retest no problem give him another chance so we gave a chance you know the child just copied from google and gave 65 marks whose fault is this the fault the child was genuine and got 28 marks if i was genuine enough to call the child maybe and then give them some advice and could have uh, given uh, maybe a conditional promotion the child would have remained quite honest even after that i have kindled the spirit of dishonesty in the child by giving them a failure 
and giving them a retest chance. So the technology has kindled both positive and negative into the children and the society. Parents seeing them, seeing the children practicing all type of negativities, they have come to a set up pattern of mind stating, it's okay, this is how this year is going. So let it go on. What are we promoting? So from here, what is my point is, what is the belief system that the teachers, the parents and the child have been built with? We need to inculcate into them, come whatever happens, be genuine to yourself. Come whether your parents are watching, your teachers are watching, your principal is watching, or the society is watching, you be honest to yourself. You have honestly got 28 marks, great, God bless. And we need to teach them the values of practicing not only the basic structure of all types of value-based education. And we need not give them a chance to exploit. The moment we give them a target, you go, oh, you are a failure. Naturally, the child's mind are the alternates. Today, being, of course, I don't want to enter into politics. What is happening in the field of politics? Same. The moment, the moment you go on a genuine platform, you are not going to be a winner. You need to tie up, keep an alliance with some, okay, fine, I don't want to enter into deep. So this is what the technology has come today and you, everything in the world, the marketing, the uh, what not in the world, everything is online. Online. So I strongly believe and want to tell the students and parents and teachers who are watching this show that please inculcate genuinity, honesty in children, even if the children by honest behavior, if they are getting less marks, encourage them, do not be uh, punitive, as again Philip Sir said. Philip Sir was very strong in saying that don't be punitive, don't give them punishments. That will lead them to the unwanted means, the malpractice. So today, technology has given lots of positivities, we encourage children to take positives, ignore negatives. What is happening in the world? Two hours of online classes, five hours of Facebook, six hours of all unwanted browsing. This is what is being encouraged. Children in the school hours are only three hours and children otherwise are spending more time. If only we are able to inculcate that spirit of positivity to learn the good things in technology, we are on the right track. If not, let us question ourselves. Don't question only the students. Wonderful, sir. I, th I think it speaks volumes about both of your uh, personal value systems that you chose to you know, talk about such incidents so openly with the entire platform. And I cannot thank you both enough for this absolutely fantastic discussion. My last question, and this is more of a request. There are a lot of educators on the platform today who are right now hanging on to every word you say. What would be your advice to them? If you had to give them one advice on how they should introduce value systems in their way of teaching, not as a subject, not as a curriculum, but in an everyday fashion, what would be your advice to them? Arun sir, if I may come to you first. To be just a gist of it, teachers, educators, try to be facilitators and mentors. Try to be facilitators and mentors. Don't try to be boss or leaders. When you say facilitators, you travel along with students. When you say mentors, mend the ways when they do mistakes. With a very positive approach, Come on, it's quite human, quite normal. Do not be panicked. And I am there with you. Come what may, even if you have a fight with your mother, come what may, you may have a fight with your friend. Befriend them, pocket them, tell them, bring in confidence, win their confidence and say, yes, I have a teacher whom I can address to. All my problems come what may. Let it be relationship problems. Let it be my age problems. Let it be my educational problems. Let it be my stress problems. Let it be my conflict issues. <coughs> there is a teacher. Building the, building the student, the confidence in you. Yes, I am a teacher and I have. For example, how can we, we are teaching the concept of mathematics, probability. Probability can be used both ways. As a math teacher, I am a math teacher. I can talk about probability. The probability concept can be used for how far it's probable to rain today, or how far it's probable of getting, okay, so many ways of teaching. But the same thing also can be converted to gambling. I am teaching profit and loss. I am teaching profit and loss. But the profit or loss should be of some ratio. A 
an object bought for 10 rupees can be sold for maximum 18 rupees okay maybe a reasonable profit a thing which is bought for 10 rupees you are going to sell for 120 rupees and this is the value system that you are going to inculcate into the students i am very very sorry to tell you you are not a way to teach it so teachers try to become facilitators try to become mentors give them lots of innovative approach don't just believe in the old old traditional way of teaching constraints conservation all conservative people oh no you know what i was doing i'm i am here in this school for 20 years i know what i am doing every day you are a learner and every day a student is coming to learn something new from you so innovate in your teaching innovate bring some novelty though you may be teaching photosynthesis for 20 years what is the new thing that you can teach in photosynthesis today in today's context in online context making your use of a 3d concept making use of a lively concept you may even bring i have i have been taking to my classes of my teaching you that i take lots of plants a plant which is grown in sunlight a plant which is not grown in sunlight planted on the same day when i was having a seminar for some teachers i took the system to my school where i have planted two plants and one is grown because of the sunlight and water but one plant is totally stunned, not grown. Same water, same manure. But why? So we are the teachers and we are the facilitators. We are the mentors. Let us not be punitive. Let us not be judgmental. Let us be facilitators and mentors. This is a message to all the teachers who over the world that I would like to pass for. Thank you so much, sir. Some wonderful advice there, Dr. Sarkar. Yeah. Uh, I think, first of all, we have to remove fear from their mind. If really you want to inculcate values among children, they must not have fear to ask any question, to accept their mistakes in presence of you, in front of you. They must not have this fear. So this is a role of a teacher, as sir was mentioning. I'm totally agree with Harul sir. He, yes, need to be become felicitator, mentor, and let me add here what you have to be a coach of your child because the coach knows very well your weaknesses, your strong point. So you have to behave like a coach to so tell children what are the strong behavior they do have. Every child does have the individual quality. Need to talk on that. Because what is the value education? Why we are talking about the value education? Ultimately, the aim of the value education is to train the children face the outer world with the right attitude. Let me repeat this. Face the outer world with the right attitude. Today, it is not important when you are in front of your elder, how are you behaving? The important is that when you are there in front of your younger, how you are going to talk with your younger brother, sister, friend, that is very, very important. Because in the school, we just teach them the discipline. Teacher is there, you have to be very disciplined. Keep your hand back, say good morning, say namaste. But if you want to know real their values, you go and when they mix up with their age level children, are how they behave with their younger children. So my first point is that we have to remove fear from their mind. They must not have. And for that, we have to reduce the gap between children and teacher, children and parents, children and society. Then only what sir was mentioning, we can become a felicitator. We can become a coach. Because you see, in a sports field, that sports person is going to talk everything with the coach, whatever problem he's facing. The same thing in a, our school education system, a child has to speak everything with parents as well as teachers. So that is needed. The second thing is that we have to make more responsible for their behavior. When I'm talking about to making them more responsible uh, on their behavior, please, do not go in a negative term. If a child has behaved differently, out of your expectation, beyond your expectation, you try to find out the cause, why child is behaving, why there is a change in the child. And for that, need to have a dialogue, need to have a talk. 
what one coach, one facilitator only can do. So once you have removed the fear from the mind, then you see a beautiful relationship between all the stakeholders, children, parents, and the teacher, and the children will flourish and they will just move because you are going to make them responsible as a better citizen for our nation. That is my point. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I think we have some very concrete takeaways from the discussion. Lead by example, take away the fear, become a role model yourself. And I think your path is sorted. Once again, thank you so much for making the time. I know both of you are swamped. Uh, Dr. Sarkar is the city coordinator for the JE exams. And I know he's had a very tough time making time for this. Arul sir is right now having his uh, mock tests and prelims happening in his school. So he looks absolutely swamped. So I cannot thank you enough for making the time for this today. No, this there, was a tough, there was a tough time for me when you asked me to be here and that also 11th hours, in 11th hours, without any preparation, I can understand, I realize how children, when we are asking children to tomorrow, your mock test is there, surprise test is there, what is the mindset? Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Well, we'll try and do better next time. Watching, <laughs> you have quite a bit to thank for. I'll leave this to you. My pleasure, you. my pleasure. So I think really a uh, great session we had. But sir, thank you so much for giving us a great start. And I think uh, some very good examples you quoted from uh, Do School are uh, really very inspirational and uh, great to know about uh, values, not only in, in, in Do School, but also some great examples you gave from around the world, you know, especially boarding schools, etc. And that really stays with us and with each member of the esteemed audience here today. Uh, Ashish, sir. Yes, again, sir. Uh, I thank you so much for taking your time out and being with us here today. You know, thank you. And uh, sir, some great examples you gave, which really stays with us, I'm sure. Uh, the example of public transport, two brothers traveling together, and subsequently what you shared, really, you know, it, it, it touches the emotional chord with all of us. The ground reality, the challenges that we face, and, and, and how sad and unfortunate it is. But I'm sure things are improving, things are looking up with all stakeholders in society joining hands, you know. Yes. Uh, I also like your take on technology and the way you, you look at it. And uh, you're very right, sir, when you said removing fear from mind. You know, that, I think, is, is the secret. So as to ensure that people really open up. Uh, because as, as we rightly say, only when we like the priest, we like his sermons. So only when the student is comfortable with teacher, and that is a fact that Arul sir also touched upon you know, very nicely. Arul sir, some great points you also made. I think uh, I completely agree with you when you said, sir, that basic value starts from home. No denying, basic value starts from house. And the way a child mimics his or her parents. And then also, you know, also draws attention to the fact that how much responsibility parents have in terms of being role models. Of course, teachers, of course, we all, all look up to our teachers, but even as parents, I'm saying, how much responsibility each parent has in order to ensure that your child is picking up the right set of values, attributes, and traits. You know, that I think really defines the entire trajectory going forward. So I think thank you, some, some great points. And also the fact that you stressed on uh, inculcating genuinity and honesty. I think two very, very important words. You know, very simple words, but they, they go on and, and with so much inner meaning. So great, I think very nice session we had. I thank members of the esteemed audience here today for their time and for being with us here today. Thank you and I look forward to your continued support. Thank, thank you, you. Take care. Thank goodbye. You. It was very thank nice you. to hear Arul sir also. Thank you, thanks, sir. Thanks, Ashish, sir. Thanks, Ajim, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Philip, sir, and all of you. And Notebook, especially for giving this chance. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you very much. Good night.